which brings us to the Defensive Player of the Year award. Now, this award um, has honestly become a lot more important in recent years just based on the fact that defense is so important in the NBA today. Um, well, certain kind of defenses, yeah. I will say. Okay, yeah. Certain types of defenses are important. Last year, the winner was Giannis Antetokounmpo, which was pretty questionable considering he also won the MVP award. But I mean, he it's not like he didn't deserve it. But historically, that's never been a precedent, right? Michael Jordan and yeah. Hakeem Olajuwon were the only two players who ever done that. Yeah, so it was a little, it was a little strange seeing him win the Defensive Player of the Year award. But they're definitely still candidates this year that will will definitely do a great job on the defensive side of the ball. The first of which is Rudy Gobert. Now we've had our criticisms of Rudy Gobert, you know, being an on and off player and you know not really being a good offensive player at times, though he's improved. Well, I mean, offensively, the thing is. He's a very good, I think, statistical offensive player in the fact that, you know, he does the dirty work well. He gets well. the rebound. He gets the rebound. He, well, he's one of the best screeners. But in terms of his talent in the offensive game, it's lacking. It's very lacking. But in terms of the defensive side of the uh, side of the floor, you can't deny he is still th- the best defensive player. The ve- one of the best defensive players in the league. One of the, ven- the best defensive bigs in the league. Like... You don't want to drive in the paint with Rudy Gobert there. You just don't. Like, even now, like he's just such a dominating presence. He positionally, a lot of the, what's kind of underrated. He knows where to be positionally. Yeah, which really helps him blocking shots and just being an overall deterrent. Uh, and he's an anchor for Utah's defense. He's a very big factor, and you can see it when he, Rudy Gobert is playing well on defense. The Jazz have one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah. When he's not playing well, the defense falls apart. So, I mean, when he's off the court, the defense falls apart, right? There's a huge jump in their defense. When The thing with Rudy Gobert, you know, people will hate him because of his contract. Granted, we don't like the contract The either. extension, yeah. Yeah, that was terrible. But the thing that you are guaranteed about with Rudy Gobert, if he's on the floor for your team, your team will be a top six defensive team in the league. At least top ten, minimum. Minimum. Um, but your, your team is probably going to be a top five defensive team in the league. That's what he guarantees you. Right, just by his presence on the court. I think going back to I think the deep the defense player of the year award in general, I think this award is also very hard to tell because of the fact that this award is, I think, predicated based on just I don't know how to say it, based on what people feel, I guess. There's no there's no actual statistics that can really help you determine who is a great defender, right? You can look at the on and off numbers. Yeah, like, you can look at steals and blocks and whatnot and defensive rating. But those numbers do not tell the tale at all, right? Oh, You're looking at a guy like yeah. Steph Curry and Allen Iverson, two of the league leaders in steals. Do we say that they're great defenders? No, no right? So I think the Defensive Player of the Year award is one of those awards that's very heavily predicated based on name, which is why a guy like Rudy Gobert has won it multiple times. Kawhi Leonard won it multiple times when, for me personally, I didn't feel like he should have won it multiple well, times. Well, name and the eye test. The eye test, I think, is very key, which a lot of casuals never really understand how the eye test actually works. Yeah. There's a difference when you're watching a game and seeing the defensive impact a player makes. For instance, and not to be a homer, but OG Ananobi on the Raptors is one of the best... 3 and D players in the NBA. Wow. Why? 3 is right now. It's right now it's a little flexible. But the defensive player is he's one of the best ones in the league. Just based on the fact that you can just see him positionally where he's at. He knows where he's where he's he's playing. He he plays the angles. He keeps his body strong. He's not making the little mistakes. He's not doing stupid fouls. So a lot of that comes from the eye test, which is where these candidates come into play. Rudy Gobert in particular. To your point about the eye test quickly before I let you go, um, a guy like Marcus Hall is a perfect guy for the eye test, right? Yeah, good example. Um, a, a guy that, if you don't know basketball, you're going to think Marcus Gasol is probably the worst player in the NBA. But if you do know basketball, you can see how big of an impact he actually has by doing the little things. You know, his second tier passes, his... Simple you know, thing, not jumping on a closeout. Yeah, knowing exactly. where to stand. You know, angling your body so that you're not... Putting yourself in a position of foul, but still trapping a player on the baseline. Exactly. He's, he, the little things. The definition man. of eye test, right? Uh, I'll let you go. Yeah. Little things like that. But that's really why we put Rudy Gobert as a candidate for the Defensive Player of the Year award. The second candidate is going to be Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis was a defensive monster last year. Um, 
And we expect the same this year. Honestly speaking, in our opinion, he should have won the Defensive Player of the Year award last season. Well, we had him as our guy. Yeah, we had him as our winner. But, you know, uh, Giannis ended up winning the award. But you can't deny Anthony Davis is... He is one of the best... Def- like, he is one of the best defensive picks. Like, he can guard basically one through five, if not two through five positions on the court. Which... For a big man, that's exactly what you want. And in the league where switching is so important. Now, I think the one thing that might hurt him is the fact that with Marc Gasol, I think, I mean, this was also the case last year that he's probably going to play on the perimeter a bit more. Especially, I think we've seen this season too, where LeBron James, they're going to rest him even more on defense. So Anthony Davis, a guy like Anthony Davis was guarding Kawhi Leonard in the season opener, right? So he's probably going to be on the perimeter a lot more. Which is why you've seen in the first couple of games that his blocks, uh, his block numbers have no, been nowhere near what they were last year. I think that'll even out as the season goes on. But I think in terms of the defense player of the year award, it's impact is a big thing, right? Not just the stats, but the overall floor impact. And then I think also the thing for Anthony Davis is the fact that a lot of people had him as their defense player of the year last year. So we all know how the awards work. If a guy is, you know, for example, second last year, they might give it to him this year. Right? It happened to Rudy Gobert, actually. Exactly. Uh, which brings us to the third candidate for the Defensive Player of the Year award. We have Bam Adebayo, who, honestly speaking, honestly, he's one of the best. He's a very good defensive player. Man. He's one of the best big men. Like, um, I don't know when. I, I think I saw it in the preseason game when the Raptors played the Heat. Just Bam just swallows up the paint, man. He made it impossible. Like, there was a there was a moment where Bam made a chase down block and he blocked the shot. I think who I don't know who made the sh- was taking it was late. Maybe it was Fred Van Vliet. He Fred Van Vliet threw, threw a high layup off the glass. Bam came out of nowhere. Give me that shit. Slap that shit right out the air. Like the amount of athleticism you need to, to pull something off like that is incredible, and the amount of hustle. Not to mention the fact that in addition to his paint presence, he is one of the best. Uh, Mobile big men as well. Yeah, right. He can switch onto the perimeter if you need him to. So he is has turned himself into one of the best defenders in the league on a year to year basis, and we see that I think even more in the playoffs how vital he is to my to the Miami Heat success. But in terms of who our candidate is going to be, I think we're going to give it to Anthony Davis this year. Um, I think big, he screwed last year. Yeah, I think the big reason why that we're going to give it to him this year is because of the fact that he was the runner-up last year. The LA thing also helps where he's playing in, he's playing in Hollywood, right? He's going to be alongside the biggest name in the NBA, which is LeBron. Um, I think the one thing that might hurt him is that he might play less minutes this year, obviously. But, you know, with all the stuff that has that he has going for him, I think that has to be our candidate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Anthony Davis is a fantastic player. 